Okay, beautiful souls, we are here at the computer. I'm ready to begin this tutorial. Just wanted to um, share that today I will be using Adobe Illustrator to create uh, the image for our rug. But please feel free to use any program that you have available unto you. Uh, there is uh, Cricut users out there, Silhouette, um, some use Canva. Um, so whatever program that you have, it'll still work. It's just the same dimensions, okay? So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to create a new. The outside of the rug is 30 by 18, and the inside, which is going to be my print area that I would like to utilize, is going to be 24 by 12. Now, you don't have to use the 24 by 12. You can have a smaller um, image if you like. That's just the image that I, I mean, the, um, the measurements that I'm going to utilize. Uh, and we're going to hit Create. If you have a printer that is that is not able to print out the 24 by 12 um, you still can print it out they may just uh, have you um, to print it out in two sections and you could just tape them together all right so after we create the measurements that we need i am going to go to file to get this image i'm going to place hit place and I am going to get to the library okay because this is the image I used in the beginning okay so once I got my image just go ahead and click um, you know uh, what right click go ahead and um, make the image how big or how small you want it you don't have to do it this big. This is just my preference. I'm going to look and see and make sure I have enough because I want the writing to be right here. But let's work on this image. Now, in order for me to get the, um, the look or the cut that is needed that you've seen in the rug, I am going to have to break this image apart. And how I am going to do that and the reason why I'm going to break this image apart because this will allow me um, with my cutter that I'm using, I'm using a GCC cutter. This will allow my cutter to cut um, what colors or, you know, when it's separated or what uh, part of the image that I would like to uh, cut. So to do that, I am going to go to image trace and I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose just high fidelity photo. So I'm going to choose that. Just working and initializing those pixels. And after that, to make it edible for me, I'm going to hit expand. Now you see once I hit expand, you see the blue lines, which shows the separation of the different um, pieces that, um, or part of the image that I can now go ahead and adjust to my liking. So from there, if you click on it, you see it's not, uh, what do you call it? I can't um, play around with the uh, image. So I am going to go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, and hit the direct selection tool. And by this way, I am able to uh, play around with this image. Okay, so. I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to ungroup. All right, I'm going to click back over. Once I ungroup, I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I'm sorry, keep my direct selection tool. And I am going to click on what part of the image that I would like to adjust. Okay, so say if. And right now, I can actually save this just as it is. And once I um, export it over to my um, printer uh, cutter, it will actually, you know, choose um, the part of the image, you know, that I would like to cut now. But what I'm going to do so I can um, be sure 
to make sure it cuts the color that I want, I'm just going to play around and change the image. So, say if I wanted my glasses, I, I don't know. We're just going to choose a color. It really don't matter. Yeah, that color. That's fine. And I wanted my lips to match. Okay. Uh, to make sure I get the correct color <laughs> that I just utilized, I am going to go over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to get my eyedropper tool. Let's click on it. And while you have your lip or whatever you have selected, you're going to click on whatever color you want inside of your image. And as you can see, that changed it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click off of that. And I'm going to mouse down. Click on the top of it. And I am going to do the same thing. I am going to get my eyedropper tool and just click that selection. Okay, click off of it. And as you see now, her lips are uh, purple. Now, I'm going to keep her hair black. Let me show you. Because I can make that. Once I get over to my cutter, you can make any color you want. And you, you just have to remember that. You could choose whatever uh, glitter that you want, you know, you just, you know, click and you will see actually when we get on um, over there to the other program. Um, but this is just to help me uh, reference for me. And um, let's see, I'll take her shirt. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go over here and I am going to click my eyedropper tool just playing around with it I'm just gonna click all right and from there I'm just gonna leave it alone but I also wanted to add if you wanted to change the color let me show you I'm gonna go right back to my direct selection too if you wanted to change the color of her skin you could do that as well anything that's a clickable area that you can um, play around with okay say if you wanted her skin it could be any color but uh say if you wanted it i don't know let me see this mouse y'all blue <laughs> you know you can make it any color and adjust it to whatever color you want this is just what i uh i prefer um right now for this uh, the sake of this is going to leave her co color as is Okay, I'm going to go, and please be sure, um, if you can see around, hopefully you can see, you see how I clicked on the side of these images, um, don't know if you can see it real well, and it's a bounding box around it. What I'm going to do, because I don't want that bounding box to be part of the image once we go in and cut it, you know, for our, uh, our, our, our mat. So I'm going to click and I'm going to delete. Okay. Make sure that you are in your direct selection. Um, You see how my computer freezing up, y'all? I need me a new computer. I use it so much. Okay. Let's see if. Okay. We're going to delete that box. Okay, I'm going to have to restart my computer. Remember, when you're using that direct selection uh, tool, just be uh, careful because I'm telling you, it will. Um, distort your image if you're um, not careful and I do apologize for that I'm going to have to probably restart my computer because I see right now that it is it might just be moving uh, a little slow yeah I think it 
Yeah, it, it, it deleted it. It just, oof. Okay, let's try that one over here. <clears throat> I have to catch up. It's just moving real slow, um, my computer. Let's go here and hit delete. Okay, beautiful uh, folks. I'm gonna go ahead and restart my computer and I will be back. I don't wanna um, waste your time by um, having uh, issues and technical difficulties. So I will be right back. Okay, beautiful souls. I am back, restarted the computer. Um, okay, so um, you see right here, um, once you uh, click on that with your direct selection tool, it'll give you the opportunity to adjust it or do whatever you um, need to do. I'm gonna hit delete. You see how I delete it. Um, the same thing over here. I'm going to delete. And just go around and just, you know, look at your bounding box. Because you want that image to, um, like I said, um, when you take it into whatever program that you're going to be using, you don't want that bounding box to be part of your um, delete, to be part of your image. All right, now, inside of here, let me see if I can see, inside of here, that's also um, part of the bounding box, but when you delete it, even though that's fine if you want our hair to um, look like that, but I like the definition to define um, the, um, distinguish the difference, you know, this in between her hair, and her um, glasses, beads, or whatever. So I just wanted to show you that, but I'm going to hit undo. All right. Now, I am going to hit that. Um, well, I'm going to take my mouse, hold it down with the, the, um, the right um, clicker, and I'm going to choose the entire image and I am going to then right click and I am going to group this together all right then I go back over here okay y'all here we go again and I'm going to go to my selection tool and just click on it so by that way, I can just go ahead and, um, you know, move it around. Now, let's see. What I also notice, you see these little, um, the, like the blue little dots, like around her hair, inside her glasses. Let's go back to the direct selection tool. And it's kind of hard, but um, once you do that and click back on the image, you'll see them kind of highlighted. What we're going to do, we're going to click on them little dots and we're going to do, oops, oh, no, we're not going to do that. Oh, I'm so glad I did that for y'all can see. You have to make sure that you're clicking on the actual dot, not the whole, the whole item. And so since they're grouped together, we're going to, it's already grouped. I just wanted to, I really lost my other thing. Okay, go to my download. Let's go here. And the reason why I am, let me go back up here. This mouse is about to drive me bananas, y'all. I'm gonna have to definitely go and get me a new. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure. this out. 
out the way. Be better for me to click. You see these little dots right here? I'm sorry, but it, this is good that it's actually shown up. We need to delete those because what those turn into is going to be cut lines. So you don't want holes inside of your um, your image. And then again, I mean, um, it's not a really big deal because you just don't have to weed those. You can just still read around, you know, the image that you want, but just trying to make sure um, that we um, make sure that we delete all of those um, little small little dots. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and go back to my selection tool. Let me see if there's ways to do this. Um, um, just want to make sure. Okay. And you have to be careful to try to make sure that you line her up just as she was. So take your time. Okay. All right. Then we are going to go ahead and hit our selection tool. We are going to move. Oops, Lord, have mercy. Forgot to group it. Yes, I did. Let's see. Okay. Then we're going to move her. Make sure you group. Okay, now we are going to go ahead and get the um, the text that we had. And actually, I am going to um, place a text that I actually use and I have it already ready. This actually I had purchased off of Etsy just uh, to let you know and let's do the ping file. And we're going to do the same thing like we did with the image. We are going to um, place. We're going to place in our image and place. Now, same thing. Um, as we did before, we are going to go ahead and image trace, but this time I am going to silhouette it. I'm going to silhouette. Okay, make it all black for me, and I'm going to expand. And that's it. After I do that, I am able to adjust. And I'm so sorry, y'all, about my mouth. Yeah. Okay, because I think that's the way it is. I'm going to have to go get it underneath that. Because uh, Lord knows I have used this a lot now. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's fine. Same thing um, here. We can go ahead and um, hit our direct selection tool let's see let's see okay we can hit our direct selection tool and um, by doing so yet again we can go ahead and we can um, alter color or do whatever um, you like to do I'm not going to make, of course, you, like as you've seen, I'm not going to make this um, as far as uh, the glitter and all that other kind of good stuff, but I will just play around um, and just use maybe the same colors we're going to use um, or the purple, um, even though this is going to be glitter, just to play around. We could just see. Um, and then you can also hit your um, direct selection tool and you can go ahead and you can like hover over, like say if you wanted um, a piece of this, 
um, the same color same thing get the um, get your eyedropper select the color you want and um, click and that'll be the color that um, of your words or whatever you would like to um, have um, but for this date I think I'm just going to play around y'all and um, remember that direct selection tool is the one you can really um, do your uh, editing um, um, with and make sure whatever um, part of your, your image that you want selected, make sure that that's just the um, image that you are selecting. Because you see when I clicked on here, the whole um, sheet, but the whole entire image, I'm sorry, uh, or the text um, was selected. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make Y'all, y'all are so patient. I just want to say thank y'all. Because I'm telling you, this, 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 this ain't what it is, y'all. Let me see this open up program. All I want is my graphics card. I'm definitely going to pick up one today because we are not going through this again. We are not. Okay, so I'm going to do my eyedropper. I'm going to click that for all of it to be selected. Then I'm going to go over here to my selection tool. And I am going to, so I can unclick and then I'm going to do my direction tool. Click off of it. And then I'll just change this to, uh, I don't know. We could change it to anything just for a test. We'll do red. <laughs> we'll do purple and red. Because we want to make sure we have the same exact colors. Um, so when we get to our other program, it won't have like a thousand colors um, selected. So we want to make sure that we have the same, um, you know, colors selected. We want to do the same thing over here. And actually, which you can all so do. Let me see that. Because I hit that background. That's why I hit that. Ooh, this mouse, y'all. But we're going to get through this. But this will not. Ooh, I hope it's just the mouse and my keyboard. Okay. We're going to do the same thing here. Y'all, look at this. I can't even. I, I can't even see my mouth now. What in the world? Ooh, ooh, Lord, it, Lord, it, Lord, it, help me. Okay, let's click off of that. Future. So go to the future. And it's passed away. I'm sure to do this. I just want to do this repetitive, uh, repetitive, repetitively, so you can um, get the gist of what I'm doing as far as using direct select and all that good stuff. But there are different ways that you can do this as well. This is just um, the way I chose for this tutorial. Okay. We're gonna play around with it. Now, 
And what I would like to do, um, Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and hit my um, selection tool. Just bring it up just a little smidget. Bring it over just a little smidget. And um, look, make sure. Okay, now the next step in order for it to be a cuttable file, um, we're going to go ahead and we have to make this into a PDF. All right. So we're going to go file, and we're going to save as, and down here, we're going to put um, PDF, okay? And we're going to name it. Let's name it. Name it anything you want, but I'll just name it something. Hopefully, I can do it with my keyboard because it ain't got space. Okay, so let's name it uh, Excel. We're going to save it. Save it. I'm going to use the same uh, default settings for now. Save it. Okay. All right. So it did save. Just want to make sure. All right. And I, um, like I said, I am going to be using uh, my GCC cutter. So I am going to go into my Sign Master um, software program, and I am going to um, create a new document. Okay. And with my program, it at this point it really doesn't um, matter if I um, um, complete the orientation as portrait or landscape. It's all about once I bring that image in, it's going to make it the same exact size how I created it in um, Adobe Illustrator. So I am going to go to File. Oh, y'all, I can't do this. We're going to go to file. We're going to go to import. I'm going to find my file. And what did I name it? I named it what? Excel. I maybe put it in there. Yep. Excel. Find it. PDF. Double click. Open it. And as you can see, it's the same exact file. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do. I am going to um, select import as editable. So that means I can edit it, okay? You don't wanna import it as a rendered image because it'll be already complete and done. So make sure um, whatever program you're using to make sure that you can still edit this um, in the program before you cut it to uh, separate you know, um, your colors or whatever um, you would like to uh, choose for um, if you're using HTV or whatever um, material that you're using. Okay, I'm going to accept. Now, I'm just going to click. I'm going to right click. And when it decides to come, all right, and then, so I'm, and then I'm going to go ahead and hold it down, bring it in, and I'm going to let go or click. And you see that is my image. Uh -oh. yeah, okay. Now, the only thing that I want to play around with is like um, maybe the um, maybe I'll do. I want to put the her, but okay. Let's do her just her eyes and her um, shirt and. Um, what I should have done, but that's okay because this is the line curve. Um, we can ungroup this. And what I could have done um, while I was in Adobe Illustrator is just ungrouped it um, and just, you know, um, 
imported um, the, um, the image of the woman in instead of this, but we can still ungroup it. So once we ungroup it, we can do what we want to do. So, you know, so, but I'm not going to use this. So I'm going to go ahead, oops, and um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I'm just going to do regular um, ink with that just so y'all can uh, kind of see. And like I said, this is just a tutorial just to show you the steps that I use. But please, like I said before, feel free to, um, you know, utilize um, whatever materials, um, whatever colors, um, whatever you would like to do to your liking. Okay, so if I would go ahead and select this, I'm going to go up here to cut. So, thank you for being so patient with me in regards to this mouse. I'm telling you. Okay, and I'm gonna go to my um, cutter. And I'm going to send it to my cutter. Because once I send it to my cutter, this will actually um, show me like what colors um, that I can separate. now. If you look up here, you remember what I said that it have like a thousand colors in here. That's because I have select by color because I don't want to print all of it. So that's what I want. So I'm going to select by the color and I'm going to go up here to the purple. Once I click the purple, as you can see, it's her shirt, her lips and her glasses. And that's what I am going to choose. And from this point, I am going to um, go over to uh, the uh, cutter and we are going to cut out the purple. I will be right back. All right, beautiful souls, we are back. And so while that is um, cutting, we are going to go ahead and I'm going to print this out um, with my sublimation printer. Okay, and we are going to print, like I said, 2412. I am using the Epson um, F570. And we are going to, everything looks good. Make sure you uh, check. And I am going to print. tell me about my inks and all that other good stuff so while that is printing I am going to go back to my cutter and, um, we can close that out and I am going to go back over to my cutter settings Well, I'm trying to go back over to my cutting settings. And I'm going to send the cutter again. And um, as you can see, like I said, you know, um, you have to make sure that you select. And the reason why this image has so many colors is because of this image. And usually it'll uh, uh, tell you what um, colors exactly. So, but what I'm going to do, I am going to um, find the color my hair which I bet you is this one yep this is the color um, and I am going to go ahead and print this color out and I will um, be back all right beautiful souls we are back and so while that is um, cutting we are going to go ahead and I'm going to print this out um, with my sublimation printer Okay, and we are going to print, like I said, 2412. I think I'm using the Epson um, F570. And we are going to, everything looks good. Make sure you uh, check. 
and I am going to print it tell me about my inks and all that other good stuff so while that is printing I am going to go back to my cutter and, um, we can close that out and I am going to go back over to my cutter setting Well, I'm trying to go back over to my cutting setting, and I'm going to send the cutter again. And um, as you can see, like I said, you know, um, you have to make sure that you select. And the reason why this image has so many colors is because of this image. And usually, it uh, uh, tell you what um, colors exactly. So, but what I'm going to do, I am going to um, find the color my hair which I bet you is this one yep this is the color um, and I am going to go ahead and print this color out and I will um, be back all right beautiful souls we are back here at the heat press um, I have cut all of my items um, out and printed those to help assist with the time. So this is going to be my head. I have my sublimation printer, I mean print. Uh -oh. I have my lip and I have my shirt. All right, so let's get to printing. And one of the things that I do also, um, while I'm printing, I'll just put my, um, doormat on my heat press just to have it warming up um, you know as I'm printing not too much you don't want it to be under there too long because you know you have the rubber so um, like I said before let me pull this off make sure you have all of your um, plastic what I mean by that is you know the little plastic thing like this off of there because you don't want them to melt. Okay. All right. And like I said before, this is the Traffic Master. Hopefully y'all can see this is the Traffic Master. And you can uh, purchase this at um, Home Depot. Uh, it's 18 by 30. Um, but like I said before, I just use the inside, um, which is 12 by 24 for my print. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, oh, and I forgot to show you, I have the words as well. I have my words on the screen as well. So the first thing that I am going to do, I am going to place my image background, which is the glitter, onto my mat. And what I'm going to do is uh, first, I'm just going to warm it up for about maybe five seconds or something. I just want it to stick because it's going to be under there anyhow um, when we actually uh, press the sublimation. So it don't have to be too, too much. And I actually try to really cover this mat. And I do have uh, some wider paper, but have it now and we are going to press for about five seconds oops I gotta adjust I got to adjust my heat press sorry about that I should have had that already done make sure things like this that you already have done. okay and I'm not gonna leave that on there long because remember to sublimate is 400 degrees and um, like I shared before even though my um, heat press says 6373 it does go up to the temperature of 400 it's just old and so what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead we're gonna peel that off all 
All right. take our sublimation piece and what I did I cut this out um, because I want to make sure I line it up correctly so I actually separated it from the other part of the uh, image which is the words and I'm gonna put this on there make sure you line it as straight as you can best as you can take your time but when you add sublimation uh, with um, glitter or glitter with sublimation, oh, it's just so, 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 so awesome. And y'all will see. And this technique, um, it's a lot of folks that use this technique. You can find it probably about anywhere um, um, on Instagram. Um, not sure about the rug. I haven't seen that. Um, but just another tool in your arsenal that you can provide for your customers. Something different. Even though some folks don't want to step on it. <laughs> they say it's too precious, but you know, for an entryway or in your room, it'd be awesome. And I know y'all saying, well, why didn't you put the paper under there at the same time? Oh, yes. I have a spot. It's not good on my heat press. You see that? I didn't take it like I wanted to. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in. And this is the things you have to do, y'all. I'm going to go back in. make this again to see if it works. So let's see. It's not that uh, it was uneven, but um, maybe I didn't have the pressure down. But it seems like I have the pressure down. But also I have a little, um, um, what do you call it? A little, uh, like a groove um, at um, on my sublimation uh, machine on the top. So that's why is be very careful and to make sure that you cover and protect your heat press. Um, I believe when it got moved, you know, somebody might have, you know, hit it or whatever. I don't know. But just make sure that you definitely uh, cover up um, your heat press and, and really take care of it because it can affect the way an image uh, will come out. So we're going to try this again and hopefully to get some of that um, um, ink off of there. And then also with the grooves in the rug, that also makes a difference as well. So, we will see. Yep, a lot better. See that? Yes, isn't that beautiful? All right. Now what I would like to do Just remember that groove that's kind of jacked up. 
I am going to go as fast as I can because I don't want my thing to hit my groove. And then I am going to actually place the print, the word, on the other side before I start loading my glasses and stuff. So let's put this here. Make sure it's straight. Now this is where um, I also use. Um, don't ever do this, guys. Reaching over this heat press like this. I also use uh, the adhesive spray, but I'm gonna go ahead and just take this down. This floor won't have any mud in it. All right. Oh, good deal. That's really pretty. All right. And let's get it straight as we can. Because we don't want it to shift. Okay. I'm going to make sure I cover up my other image. Careful, slowly. I'm just going to press again for 60 seconds. Making sure that your print is uh, evenly distributed through your heat press because that does make a difference. And what I also uh, could have done is use my other heat press um, just to do like, you know, the one side versus using the whole, um, I mean, this side heat press, which uh, could have a possibility of um, the picture, you know, um, getting printed again. So you wanna make sure um, that it comes out okay. And if not, guess what? Trial, what did I say? Trial and error. I was trying to figure that out the other day. I was being trial and measure. It's like trial and error. Hopefully this works. All right, let's see y'all. Let's see. Uh, one good sign is coming through. Oh, yes, it did. Inhale, exhale. Whew. This is gonna be a new beginning for this year, honey. We ain't doing all that mess, okay? Inhale, exhale. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna shift this now to this side of the press. Because remember, I said up here, um, and matter of fact, if I can find it, I can show y'all what I mean. All right. I am going to then make sure it's still press away from that other piece. All right, and you're gonna bring it out. And then, we are gonna start loading our other stuff. And we can do this all at once. Even though it's glitter on her shirt, I'm gonna do a little something different. Just to try techniques, that's all. You don't have to do this, all right? Even though her glasses is the bomb, because they actually go with um, the print, and what we are going to play around also with this little thing. Let's see. Okay, I'll be right back. Let me see if they're on the other side of the room. 
I'll be right back. All right, beautiful. So we are back. Uh, tell me why the glasses was on the bottom of my foot. I'm looking around the whole, the whole shop. But anyway, um, you do not have to do this um, step by adding other um, items or glitter items on top of this. Just wanted to show you that um, you can do so many different uh, levels of um, stacking. Because sometimes they say, well, you can't stack glitter. I stack glitter all the time. All right, uh, here go with glasses. I want to leave a little of the purple in her glasses, um, like maybe there, like at the top to match the rug. And this is kind of bent to get me. Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's do that again. Lips. Something different. That's all. Something deep. You know me. All right. And her shirt. And I want to kind of leave a little bit of her shirt. The purple as well. Please be careful when y'all doing this, though, so you don't want to get burnt. And it's okay that you have the little white showing. If you do not want the white showing on the outline, you can just make your image a little bigger than the um, background image. Okay. Okay. I'll probably do probably maybe seven seconds, seven to eight seconds. Uh, I don't have to be on there too long. All right. Here. Here. Because remember, it's already at the 400, so it only needs to be gone. All right. So let's do about seven seconds. Thank y'all guys again for tuning in. If you find the content, to your delight, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because we're going to be doing some dynamic stuff. All right, so let's reveal and see. Yes, see, pretty. Lips. And that is it. And what we'll do, I'm going to take it outside so you can see it and have a better view. So I will meet you outside, beautiful souls. Look at that. Inhale the future and exhale the past. We moving on. All right, beautiful souls, we are finished with our tutorial and I am so excited to show you the end, end, end result. Are y'all ready? All right, I had to come outside so the sun can kind of glaze on it so you can see how beautiful that it is. All right, hopefully you can see it. Inhale the future, exhale the past. Can you see how beautiful that is? Hopefully the light is filtering off of it. All right, so that ends our tutorial for how do you uh, sublimate a doormat as well as placing some glitter on there to make it pop a little bit, all right? So please feel free to, to uh, design your mat how you want and send me some pictures so I can see uh, what type of um, design did you come up with. Thank you so much again uh, for uh, tuning in. Thanks again for my subscribers. Thanks again for my new uh, souls. Uh, I would ask you yet again to, if you like this content, to please subscribe, share, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell for you can get all of the videos that I will upload. Thank you, and remember this. 
So love yourself before anybody else. Peace.